Hello, it's Mr. Waitley. Today we're going to take a look at calculating the volume of three-dimensional composite figures. You know, I mean, we're surrounded by these things, you know, and I was going to get some printer paper and I looked in my cabinet and I thought, oh my goodness, look at this. You know, for example, I mean, obviously we've got a trapezoid. This box is a figure. We could call it a composite figure. We could say it's two triangular prisms and then in the middle a rectangular. But anyway, the, the point is we're surrounded by three-dimensional objects and they can be often categorized into categories. This would be a, what, a three-dimensional uh, rectangular prism. Uh, a lot of those around us, cereal boxes, you know, you guys sent me some of those surface area ideas or volume ideas from your cereal boxes. Uh, here's another one, you know, take the flap off. This thing, I don't know how this thing comes off, but another three-dimensional uh, rectangular prism. Uh, here we have, you know, it's kind of obvious, we have a cylinder, basically. Three-dimensional circular prism. These batteries, you know, you guys, how many times you put batteries in your controllers for the Xbox or PS4? Batteries are obviously three-dimensional. Uh, mostly follow the shape of a cylinder. And, you know, another cylinder. This container is basically a cylinder. You could easily find out how many of these little BBs fit inside. Um, another idea, too, is you guys you might be familiar with this, right? Some of the yummiest, saltiest soup in the world comes in a three-dimensional, obviously, container. And you could say it's almost a cone, a partial cone. Okay. So, you know, just some examples of three-dimensional, you know, figures. We've got a cylinder. Whoop, come back. I don't know what this is. We found it on the beach. Okay. So the idea today is we're going to calculate the volume, the amount of space within these three-dimensional figures. And often, um, you know, if we know the volume of this and we put this thing on top of it and find the volume of both added together, it's their total volume together. That's pretty much what we'll be doing. We're going to calculate the volume of each parts of a figure because it's a composite figure. It typically means it's a figure made with other figures. So we're going to calculate the volume of each one separately and we'll total it, add it together. This is not the only way to calculate the volume um, and it depends on the situation too because you might have cutouts. You might have a you know, a shape or a figure, for instance, like this, and then maybe, I don't know, part of it's cut out. You might have to subtract sometimes. Okay, but for our purposes, pretty much we'll have a figure like this, and mentally we'll think about it separately. We'll find the volume of one with the volume of the other, and we'll combine that volume. All right? So why don't we go ahead and get started? I think the hardest part of the entire process will be for you to be neat and organize. That's, you know, that's crucial to your success with these types of problems. Okay, so I'm going to be neat. And I'm going to label things. I'm going to be organized. So at least that's the plan. So you know, looking at this three-dimensional figure, we have a couple things going on. This top figure, um, pretty apparent that it's a triangular prism so we have a triangular prism up here and then attached to it down below here we have the rectangular prism so we need to start thinking okay volume we're dealing with space inside okay so we need to think of the volume formula for each and i'm gonna you know so i'm gonna put over here here we go i'm gonna find the volume of this I'll find the volume of this, and we'll add it together. So I'm going to put a big V there with this uh, little triangle, and that's going to tell me I'm finding the volume of this figure. Okay? 
Well, the volume of this figure is the area of its base times its height, times how far back it goes, if you remember that. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in the values. The base in this case is a triangle. So you have to remember, um, we're gonna find the base area. So the area of this triangle is base, base part of the triangle, times the height divided by two. Okay, so that would be for the area of the triangle times and then how far back it goes and if you look over here it goes back six feet and again that reminds me i've left out the units i'm going to leave the units out to the very end um, and we're dealing with volume so we're going to get units cubed okay and we're getting those units from this times this times this we'll get us our cubic units all right well if you look at a triangle over here this distance here follows the same as this. So this is six. <clears throat> so the base of the triangle is six. The height of the triangle is four, and then divided by two. So that's the area of the triangle times how far back it goes, which in this case is six feet. All right, so I'm gonna calculate this. This is 24 over two times 6, which is 12, times 6, which is 72 feet, feet, feet. So the volume of this portion here is 72 cubic feet. Now we'll calculate the volume, this is the easier part, we're going to calculate the volume of the rectangular prism. So I'll put capital V, put a little uh, rectangle down there. And the volume formula for rectangular prism is pretty much the same as the, this one. You can find the area of the base and then times the height or how far back it goes, how many layers of those feet we have. Okay, so the volume formula is area of the base, base area times height. <clears throat> In this case, base area will be 4 times 6, that's the base area, times the height, how far back it goes. It goes back 12, I believe, yeah. Okay, alright, so let's go ahead and calculate this. And again, I'm going to leave the units off until the end. It's just less writing and less traffic on here for, uh, for me to deal with. So 4 times 6 is 24, this is square feet, times 12 feet, and that's where we get our cubic feet. So I'm going to plug into my trusty calculator, 24 times 12, it's 288, okay? And we're dealing with cubic feet, all right? So we're almost finished. The verb here is to calculate the total volume. Well, I've got this, and I've got this. These represent the volume of each of these figures separately, and your job now will be to add those together. So I still have the 288 cubic feet on my calculator. I'll take that and add it with 72, and end up with, so I'm adding them together, 360 cubic feet. So this will hold, 360 cubic feet. Maybe it's a cage for your rabbits or something. Um, it's a lot of space. Maybe it's your tiny house. You know, six feet wide, 12 feet back is the top. Yeah, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Put some wheels on it, put a trailer hitch on it, and tow it around. Okay, so there you have it. You have the idea. So we're going to do another one. <clears throat> The method will be very similar. Again, the whole thing that uh, I think the challenge for you will be to write everything out and stay organized. And that's what I've tried to do this whole time here with this. Okay? All right, let's take a look at this one. Okay, I have no idea what in the green earth that is. But if we are asked to find the volume, then we'd have to find the volume of this. It's not a full sphere. I think you can see it's a half sphere. And then we also have a cylinder, okay? So, I'm gonna go with the volume of the sphere first. 
formula. Let's think. Volume formula. What is it? It's four thirds times pi times the radius cubed. That was in one of our previous lessons. And then I'm also going to uh, down here. I'm going to put down. I don't know how long or how. You know what? I'm, I'll do one at a time. So let's just do this. We'll do one at a time. So this is going to get me the volume of the sphere. Ooh, but we we only want half of the volume because that's a half sphere. So we'll have to take all of the sphere volume and then divide it by two. All right? And again, I'm going to move pi to the back and deal with that later. And the radius in this case is six. So do not make the mistake of plugging in the value, uh, substituting 12 for the radius. All right? Four thirds. I'm going to move the r cubed to the midpoint here. I'm going to move pi to the end. And all of this will have to be divided by 2. Because, again, we're looking for the volume, but not of a full sphere, but a half sphere. Okay? Um, 6 cubed is 6 times 6 times 6, which equals 216. Again, I'm trying to be neat, trying to be very methodical. And that's the hard part, is not getting mixed up with what you've written. So I'm going to calculate this part. Normally I'd probably simplify this first, but I'm not. I'm going to multiply 216 times 4. It's 864. And then I'm going to divide that by 3. 288. And then we have pi. Okay, so again, this is just the sphere volume formula. And then we're going to divide it by uh, 2. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put times 3.14 equals and then divide it by 2. All right. So it's a half sphere. We have... 452.16 cubic inches. Where do the cubic inches come from? Uh, really right here. This is 6 inches and then you cube it. <clears throat> so that's the volume of the sphere that is a half sphere. We're not finished. I'm going to mark this, though, so I know that this is the total volume of the half sphere because I am going to need that to go back later and add it with the volume of the cylinder. Now, volume of the cylinder, well, if you remember, volume of uh, the volume formula for the cylinder is to find the area of its base circle and then multiply it by the height value. I think I said how many layers there are, and that's its height. All right, so um, let's go ahead and calculate the volume of the cylinder. Volume formula is pi r squared, because that's the area of its circular base, times the height. Okay, and if we look over here, the radius of this cylinder is the same as the radius of the sphere. It's 6. Okay. So I'm going to move pi to the back. And I've got... No. If I, have, if I move pi to the back, I've got this. And then this, the radius is 6. Height is 13. I'm going to calculate this first. Um, I need the calculator for this. Sorry, I ran off the... wasn't even looking. <clears throat> 36 times 13. It's going to be 468 pi. So when I calculate that, I'm going to get 1469.52.
and we're dealing with cubic inches, okay? So, we're almost finished. The last part will be to combine those volumes. We found the volume of the half sphere. We found the volume of the cylinder. Now for me to get the total overall volume, obviously, I hope. I hope it's obvious. We're going to total these two. We're going to add them together. I already have this in the calculator. So I'm going to add that to it. Plus, 452.5. Okay, looks to be 1921.68 cubic inches. Okay, and I'm going to look at it. That's about 400, that's about 14, that's about right. I think we're good. So that would be the overall total volume of this composite uh, three-dimensional figure all right very nice so figure one more would not hurt you wouldn't go over this I'll just do this a little quicker now in this case again you have to assess what you're dealing with and and looking at this and with the shape and all I, I'm sure you can figure it out and it also tells you <laughs> but uh, we do we have a rectangular prism here and then I think you can identify that as a it's a cylinder but then it's been split down the middle so it's being considered a half cylinder so we're gonna find the volume of each I'll do this one a little quicker <clears throat> and I'm gonna start with the volume of the cylinder that's supposed to be a cylinder doesn't matter what you start with. Pi r squared times height is basically the volume formula. This is the area of the base. Um, but in this case, it's a half cylinder. So it'll end up being divided by 2. Okay, the radius in this case, if you look over here, this is the diameter of the cylinder. It's 9. So the radius... 4.5. So I'm going to move pi to the back end. I'm going to plug in, uh, I'm going to go with 4.5 squared. It's the radius. Times, now how far back does it go? Holy cow, it goes back 42 centimeters. So this is the radius squared times the height um, times pi all divided by 2. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take 4.5 and, and square it because it's pi r squared. 4.5 times 4.5 equals 20 point... Sorry. Okay. Now, I, this is glaring at me right here. Instead of multiplying all of this and dividing by 2, what I can do is just simplify this right here. I'm going to divide 42 by 2 and get 21. So I'm going to multiply 20.25 times 21 times pi. And it is 1,335.29 I'm rounding cubic centimeters okay so if you think about the little squares you have on your graph paper if those squares became three-dimensional that's exactly a cubic centimeter so 1300 of them would fit in the half cylinder okay now I'm gonna go ahead and find the volume of the rectangular prism I think I'll move that here and go here with it. Okay. <clears throat> now, it would be area of the base times the height. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how you want to call the base. Um, I'm going to call this side here the base. I'll find the area of it. And then that's going to be the height then would be how far back it goes. So that's how I'm going to figure it. You could find the area of this 42 by 9 rectangle and then multiply by 35. doesn't matter. Okay. 
I'm not going to use the or write down the units yet. So this is the area of this rectangle times how far back it goes. 35 times 9, then times 42. Looks to be 13,230 cubic centimeters. Okay. Um, I didn't put a little box around here. Almost finished. What do we have to do? Well, guess what? We have to put both of those together. Oops. To get our overall total volume. So let's do that. I already have 13,230 in the calculator. So I'm going to add one 1335.29 and get 14,565.29 cubic centimeters. Okay? And that would be the overall total volume of this figure. All right? So, uh, just a quick reminder, we took some composite three-dimensional figures. We mentally broke them into different figures. We found the volume of each, each part of it, and at the end we added it together. So that's how we calculated the volume of a three-dimensional composite figure. There are other ways to do it, but this way will work for you quite often. Take care.